Camden Grocery is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Girls State Softball Championships. Fairway believes in supporting the places Iowans learn, work, live, and play. Congratulations to all the schools and student athletes in this year's games. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. The culmination of a season no one will soon forget settles at Harlan and Hazel Rogers Sports Complex in Fort Dodge as we have made it to the final night of Class 5A softball. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union, a beautiful night, perfect conditions for players, coaches, and fans as we prepare to crown a first-time state champion. It is the top two seeds Fort Dodge taking on Cedar Rapids Kennedy. I am Brad Wells. She is Molly Parrott. As we welcome you to Fort Dodge and Molly, you can't ask for much more than number one versus number two in a state final. And Fort Dodge, the hometown team, expecting a huge crowd in support of the Dodgers tonight. It will be a tough matchup to get past the second seeded Cougars. Very, very impressive pitcher in the circle, Kaylin Kenny. Let's take a look at more on Cedar Rapids Kennedy as they are in their third trip to state in the last four years. Senior Kaylin Kinney is the leader in the circle. Uh, another solid pitcher as well in Jamie Sheck. Six players for Cedar Rapids Kennedy have committed to play college softball. They are talented. Very talented bunch, Brad, as you mentioned. And these are not a lot of multi-sport athletes. They are softball players through and through, and it shows. The team has been very successful in these seniors' tenure. And for the top seed at Fort Dodge, Dodgers preseason number one. They are number one at the end of the year. 16th trip to state. And they've been here recently, five of the last six. Logan Schnetzer becoming the school's career home run record holder this season and a sophomore in the circle in Jalen Adams, the daughter of head coach Andy Adams. She leads all 5A with strikeouts and wins this season. She'll also lead things off for the Dodgers and they're excited to get as many fans as they can in here tonight. They had a huge crowd in the semifinal win against Ankeny Centennial. We expect just about everybody in Fort Dodge to be here tonight. All right, we turn it over to public address announcer Tim Fitzpatrick. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jack North Award is given to the outstanding senior performer at the state softball and basketball tournaments. The annual award is named in honor of the former information director at the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Presenting the Jack North Softball Award is Gene Berger, Executive Director of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. The 2019 softball honoree led West Des Moines Valley to the Class 5A state championship. She won all three games in the pitcher's circle at last year's tournament while also batting 538. She just completed her freshman season at Creighton. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2019 recipient of the Jack North Softball Award from West Des Moines Valley, Haley Gatika. The IGHSAU Golden Plaque of Distinction Award honors the Iowa coach who has demonstrated a successful career while making notable contributions towards school, community, and the coaching profession. Presenting this year's Golden Plaque of Distinction Award is IGHSAU Executive Director Gene Berger. The 2020 recipient of the Golden Plaque Award in softball is Todd Miracle of Johnston High School. Todd just completed his 30th season of coaching softball. He spent eight seasons at Shenandoah, four seasons at Dallas Center Grimes, and 18 years at Johnston. He guided Dallas Center Grimes to its first ever state tournament appearance and led Johnston to three state softball championships, along with two runner-up finishes. He was inducted in the Iowa Girls Coaches Association's Hall of Fame. He's also served on the IGHSAU Softball Advisory Committee and, and has been very active with the Iowa Girls Coaches Association. Todd and his wife Wendy have three children, Tyler, Kylie, and Nicole. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to the 2020 Softball Golden Plaque of Distinction winner from Johnston High School, Todd Miracle.
Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you rise, please, as we recognize a moment of silence. Last fall, the IGH SAU lost a longtime friend, educator, coach, and Hall of Fame umpire. In honor of Jeff Tank's memory, we ask that you join us in recognizing him with a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and softball fans, and welcome to Rogers Sports Complex and this 5A championship game between the visiting team, the Cedar Rapids Kennedy Cougars, and the home team, the Fort Dodge Dodgers. Now let's meet your non-starters and assistant coaches. First of all, from the visitors from Kennedy. Number three, Addie Albert. Number 10, Jamie Sheck. Number 24, Lexi Wheatley. Number 42, Topanga Beauregard. And number 36, Olivia Herring. Your assistant coaches, Tiana Drawn, Jake Kuhlbeck, McCall Atwater, Cameron Jeffords, and Nick LeClaire. And now, here are your starters for this 5A champion team from Kennedy. Leading off and playing left field, number 25, Eddie Parker. Batting second and doing the pitching, number 44, Kaylin Kinney. Batting third in center field, number 11, Maya Dodge. Cleanup hitter for the Cougars and doing the catching, number 21, Abby Spohr. Batting fifth at second base, number 38, Mary Christofiak. Batting sixth at first base, number 15, Keaton Gerber. Batting seventh, the designated player, number two, Izzy Wright. Batting eighth in right field, number 19, Sam Sheck. And batting ninth, the shortstop, number 33, Alyssa Martin. Your flex player playing at third base, number 43, Regan Deputy. Head coach for the Cougars, Madison LeClaire. And now let's meet your non-starters and assistant coaches for the home team from Fort Dodge. Number three, Reese Peterson. Number five, Maya Davis. Number six, Ava Allstott. Number eight, Caitlin Werning. Number 13, Dallas Richardson. Number 14, Maggie Ellsbecker. Number 17, Lydia Lara. Your assistant coaches, Kenzie Alsat, Aaron Miller, and Molly Mathis. And now, here's your starting lineup for the Fort Dodge Dodgers. Leading off and doing the pitching, number 12, Jalen Adams. Batting second at shortstop, number nine, Tori Bennett. Batting third and doing the catching, number 11, Tristan Duster. Cleanup hitter for the Dodgers at first base, number 20, Logan Schnetzer. Batting fifth and playing second, number four, Martina Lowry. Batting sixth at third base, number two, Haley Wills. Batting seventh in right field, number seven, Malia Lowry. Batting eighth in left field, number 10, Chloe Wirtz. And batting ninth in center field, number one, Sophia Klinger. Head coach for the Dodgers, Andy Adams. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to our home plate area. The umpiring crew for this contest as assigned by the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. At first base, Ed Murphy. At third base, Tony Nelson. 
and calling the balls and strikes, Dirk Sorensen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for championship softball? Well, the nerves have hit full capacity here as we get ready to start the 5A championship game. Let's start with the home team who will be on the field first, the Fort Dodge Dodgers. You have Wirtz a junior in left, Klinger a junior in center field, and Malia Lowry in right field, just a sophomore. In the infield, also very young, Wills Bennett on the left side, both sophomores, Lowry a sophomore. And Schnetzer, the senior at first base. Jalen Adams in the circle. Tristan Doster behind the plate. They call her TK as Jalen Adams and Tristan Doster have been working together for quite some time. And Adams in the circle. You see her there, the daughter of head coach Andy Adams. A tough competitor hit a huge growth spurt this past year, Molly, and it has helped her as she has been put to work here in 5A, leading the entire state of 5A, strikeouts and wins this year. As she gets prepared. For her warm up pitches, we take a look at the lineup for Cedar Rapids Kennedy, as you just heard it announced. Parker, Kinney, and Dodge will start it off, followed by Spore and Christofiak, Gerber, Izzy Wright, Sam Sheck. And the runs can come from just about anywhere. Let's take a look at. Our keys to the game and Molly for Cedar Rapids Kennedy. What do you need to see from them to bring home a trophy? Well, we'll talk a lot about Kaylin Kinney in the circle for the Cougars. She will play at the University of Nebraska in the fall. She's very good at the plate. A lot of heavy hitters for this Cougar squad. We saw several home runs yesterday and in quarterfinal action. It's going to be a lot for this Dodger defense to handle. How about for the Dodgers here as they get prepared to play on their home field? Well, how exciting is it to have the, the home team for Dodge here in this championship game after being ranked first all season long? Got to take advantage of that. And this is a tough and scrappy bunch. They are youthful, so they are, uh, I wouldn't say inexperienced, but both teams actually experienced as far as championship game action. We might see some nerves early on. That might be a key for both teams. 11th time in 18 years at the state tournament for Fort Dodge. This is their first ever appearance in the championship game. And the first pitch misses low to Addie Parker. Addie Parker leads the team in hits this season, has hit 368 on the year. Played at the state tournament in 2019 at shortstop. He's a left fielder, but actually moved into that shortstop spot due to an injury to Alyssa Martin. Fouled first base side and out of play. Giving Chase, Snetzer, and Doster. As you said, Addie Parker's had a really good season at the plate. Struggled a little bit here in their first couple games of the state tournament. She wants to set the table for some very potent hitters in this Cougar lineup. Adams just misses outside and the count runs full here. On our first batter of the evening, Addie Parker trying to find a way on base. Slaps it right side, scooped by Lowry. The throw is in time. Martina Lowry, the sophomore, a great glove and gets Parker. What a play by the sophomore second base person there. Extends, gets up quickly, at least quick enough to throw from her knees. We chatted with her after the game yesterday. She had a home run in that semifinal action. She is not very big. This is Kaylin Kinney at the plate, and she has seen a ton of intentional walks this year. 
And for good reason, when she finally was pitched to yesterday, she hit it up towards the top of the evergreen trees out in left field. And I'm not, in, in speaking with Andy Adams head coach for Fort Dodge, it doesn't surprise me that they're at least for a couple pitches gonna go right at her. There's a little taste of the power. That is well foul. Kaylin Kinney has committed to play college softball at the University of Nebraska. She says she'll be going there, planning to pitch, and they also want to work her bat into the lineup. And there's a fly ball left field, and that drops. That's extra bases for Kaylin Kinney as Wirtz cannot get to it. And it's a one-out double here in the first. Cedar Rapids Kennedy gets it going offensively. And worse, Knight, you know, she stretches out, tries to make a really spectacular play. And sometimes when you do that, the ball can trickle away from, from you a little bit and allow for extra bases. But she gets up quickly. Kenny only advances to second. And now an intentional walk to Maya Dodge. As Dodge yesterday hit a home run right after Kinney was intentionally walked, a two-run bomb. It helped Kennedy get things rolling in their semifinal game. So two aboard now for Abby Spore. Spore, the Kennedy catcher, has five-round trippers on the season. She hit, she hit one yesterday, went back to back with Maya Dodge in that third inning. She goes to the off-speed pitch, hangs it up there a little bit. This Kennedy team not really a lot of competition in their first two games. Winning 9-0 in semis, 10-4, first round action. They have pounced on opponents early. In first three innings, those two games, five of six of them, they scored. That one's fisted foul. There's Jalen Adams, the sophomore in the circle, just missing a couple of pitches in this battle with Abby Spore. 2-2 two -two count now. with two aboard. Fouled away, we'll do it again. Pitching, catching duo for Ford Dodge. Adams and Doster played together for a long time. Doster is a little bit of a calming presence for Jalen Adams. Jalen's mom, Andy, of course, head coach for Ford Dodge, says her daughter's a little bit of a thinker. So right now you're gonna see her catcher go out, just give her a real brief talking to. Help her settle down a little bit. Don't think too much out here. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That one's just foul. Just past the glove of Haley Wills, too. Made a great play from her knees in the seventh inning of the semifinal win for Fort Dodge over Ankeny Centennial. Adams misses outside. Count runs to three and two. Tries to paint that outside corner. Doing a good job going inside, outside. It's the three, two to Spore. That one's caught at first by Schnetzer in a double play to end the top of the first. Kennedy threatens, but a fantastic glove shown by Logan Schnetzer, the senior at first, gets Fort Dodge out of the jam. Well, we talked about the scrappy play of this Fort Dodge team. I think four different players go for balls in that one inning. Lowry gets them started with that great play out at second base. Left field can't make the amazing diving play, but it's a great effort. Third base not able to make a great diving play on a foul ball, but what a great play there to end the inning by Schnetzer. 
All right, well, let's take a look at the defense now as Cedar Rapids Kennedy grabs their gloves. As you have Parker, Dodge, and Sheck, all juniors in the outfield, left to right. You have Deputy, a senior, Martin, senior at shortstop. On the left side, Kristofiak at second, a senior. And Gerber, sophomore at first base. Behind the plate, Abby Spore, the senior. Just had that line drive stolen to end the inning. And Kaylin Kinney, the senior, in the circle. As she can bring can bring the heat from the circle there you see her 11 and 0 record and Molly she did not allow a single run all season until the quarterfinal round game here at the state tournament as she gave up three runs in that first game victory over Pleasant Valley but other than that she has been nearly untouchable and we're gonna watch her tempo I mean you can tell just watching her warm-up she can really bring it be fun to watch these Dodgers if they can catch up to the speed that she is bringing but when she gets uh, that tempo is important Here's coach Madison said sometimes she'll play a little too quickly you gotta keep your pace Here's a look at the Fort Dodge batting order. Jalen Adams, the pitcher, will lead things off, followed by Tory Bennett, Doster, Snetzer, your top four batters, followed by Lowry Wills, Lowry Wirtz, and Klinger. All have that ability to contribute. As Adams will get the first look at Kaylin Kinney. You see Bennett on deck. Jalen Adams, the sophomore, a two-run home run in the quarterfinals against Bettendorf. So that was her first home run of the year. Not only does she lead 5A in strikeouts and wins, number two in 5A with a 620, uh, excuse me, 615 batting average. Hits and doubles also ranks number two in 5A. And behind that heater from Kinney, falls behind 0-2. Impressive, but both of these very good pitchers for these two ball clubs also very potent at the plate themselves. Fouls that one away. As I look at him here, we mentioned Jalen Adams went through a growth spurt, added about four and a half inches to her height uh, in the last 12 months. A similar build as you look at Kaylin Kinney here. First miss out of the strike zone for Kinney. Speaking of that size, Coach Adams said, you know, my husband and I couldn't figure it out. We're two Clydesdales. How could we have a pony? She said she finally developed that height from the genes uh, that we gave her. It was a pretty funny moment. She is uh, quite a personality over there in that third base, uh, third base coach's box. We're going to mic her up. I hope we have a, an opportunity to hear some of the, the funny one-liners that she will bring and the enthusiasm that she brings to this game for her team. That is head coach Andy Adams in her 19th season with Fort Dodge as Kinney gets the strikeout on Adams for out number one. What a great job of trying to make an Adams reach for that outside pitch. Kinney with a lot of movement on her pitches. And that one gets Bennett right in the front knee and Fort Dodge with a runner aboard. Let's take another look here. He does a really good job of stepping in and taking that. She seems to be okay. Tough kid out there, Bennett. The walk to first is enough to walk it off. So Tristan Doster to the plate. A two run home run in the semis in their win over Ankeny Centennial. 
Talking with her yesterday after the win over the semifinal game, said we need to keep showing everyone that we're number one until that final day is over. A little bit of a chip on the shoulder at Fort Dodge. And, you know, they feel like they deserve respect. On the way to second base, and Bennett thrown out by Spore. Martin covering. What a toss by Spore. Woo! That's a pretty good slide. Trying to avoid the tag. Was really close to avoiding that tag there at second base, but. Nice toss by Abby Spore. That's a fair ball. And that is three up, three down for Fort Dodge. Fantastic defensive plays by both teams in this opening inning. Hey, stay within ourselves here. Don't be too great. Hey, stay on it. Stay on it. We're all over it. <laughs> hey, let's go back and walk. And today, it's fire Casey is at the heart of the community. Let's a little listen in on Cedar Rapids Kennedy and Coach Madison LeClaire. Well, let's take a look at this 5A tournament. This is how it all shook out. For Dodge topping Bettendorf and then Ankeny Centennial after their win over Waukee. As Kennedy defeated Pleasant Valley and then Muscatine, who got the win over West Des Moines Valley in this 5A field. And the winner will claim their school's first ever softball state championship. Back on the first pitch. And the second. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. We remind all of our viewers that we have both head coaches mic'd up throughout this championship game. And uh, the final piece of that 5A puzzle, Molly, too. They played the third place game earlier today. Ankeny Centennial topping Muscatine 10 0 in five innings. So, the final game of this 5A season gets played today, and certainly a unique season. With COVID 19, a lot of extra precautions and Safety measures both teams had to go through. We'll have more on that throughout this broadcast as Mary Christofiak grounds out for out number one. A little slow roller, Lowry, no problem. Nice little flip over to first. At the plate, Keaton Gerber. Gerber, Gerber, four home runs on this season. That one's fouled back as well. These Kennedy batters, they are aggressive. Hitting has been their number one focus with head coach Madison LeClaire. She said they go to the plate and they're shooting for doubles. They want to hit, want to hit gaps. Like you said that very aggressive mindset. The more one runs we score, the more comfortable our pitchers can be. And uh, they're dangerous when they're comfortable, but they can run if they need to, but they primarily focus on hitting gaps and Hitting it out of the park. That one's fouled down that right field line. Off speed pitch hangs, hangs in there a little high. And it's fortunate that she pulls it foul. Yeah. 
Good eye there by Gerber. And there is a gap. It'll be a one out single for Keaton Gerber. Gerber does a nice job of working that count, staying alive. Adams moving the ball around the plate, getting ahead in the count, but these Cougars batters do a nice job of working or making them throw a lot of pitches. This is Izzy Wright, designated player. As we mentioned earlier, six of these Cougars will play college softball starting this fall. Is he right? He'll head to Pella for the Central Dutch. We'll join your alma mater of playing softball for Central. Three players from the Cedar Rapids Kennedy team will be part of the American Rivers Conference, previously known as the Iowa Conference. So fun that so many of these players will stick close to home, even though Kaitlyn Kenny will be over across the border in Nebraska. It'll be nice that she's in the Big Ten. Yep. Still will hear, hear and see a little bit of her. And for the three in the American Rivers Conference to get to see each other once in a while as well. That's right. The slap left side. Wills could not field it cleanly as that was a quick shot from Izzy Wright. And that will go down as a base hit. And so Gerber goes to second on this. A quick one hopper to Wills. Able to keep it in the infield. Keeps Gerber at second. Visit to the circle from Tristan Doster. Known through this Fort Dodge softball community as TK Doster behind the plate. Trying to settle down the Dodgers. Adams gets Sam Sheck to swing through the first pitch. Sam Sheck's had a good state tournament. Two for three yesterday in semis. Two for three in first round action. That one's fouled away and Sheck falls behind one ball, two strikes. As Adams looks to work out of another one out, two runners aboard jam. Got a double play line drive to Schnetzer at first. Gets a strike out here for out number two. So Alyssa Martin, the shortstop, up to the plate as we take another look at Adams on the strikeout. Adams is throwing for those corners. This one is fouled back. Melissa Martin played at the state tournament for Cedar Rapids Kennedy as a freshman in 2017. She was the starting center fielder. They didn't have her at state in 2019 due to a knee injury running bases in the regional final against Cedar Rapids Prairie, but just so smooth defensively and at the plate. She still wears that pretty hefty knee brace on that right knee. She will go to the University of Iowa in the fall and be a student. No plans to play softball at this point. Plans on looking into the engineering field there and excellent grades and academics for this senior. This one's popped up. Doster turns around, sees it's just out of her reach and out of play.
Jalen Adams delivers the one two just misses outside Adams thought she had it. Two balls two strikes. Good eye by Martin there with two strikes to lay off. That one's grounded up the middle. Lowry flips it to Bennett. And once again, Cedar Rapids Kennedy, two runners aboard and no runs to show for it. So we head to the bottom of the second. Scoreless here. Well, we talked a little bit about the COVID-19 safety precautions that now teams have been dealing with a lot of this, but here at the state tournament, some measures in place as well. You got the Lysol, the disinfectant wipes. You're, you're getting an extra plenish right there. You got no seating in every stand. You got to go every other seat with your seats. There's uh, plexiglass between the concession stands and fans, and you see a lot of masks being worn. And those players know, Molly, that when they get here, everything's on the line. So they're tightening things up as much as they can. Now here's here's the impact. The season delayed three weeks. Lucky to have a softball season. Just six weeks though. Four weeks the regular season to the postseason. Two schools chose not to participate. 26 teams were impacted by COVID-19. 11 of them ended their season early. Nobody here at the state tournament though affected this week. So well, in talking to the players and coaches, it was challenging. Many of these head coaches gave their assistant coaches and athletics directors and superintendents a lot of credit for all the extra precautions being taken. And you know, they said, really, it wasn't that hard. We, there's too much on the line. We, we kept our circles close. This means too much to us to risk it. They have dreams and aspirations of winning a state title, and you start to hear those stories of teams that did have to shut it down for two weeks and and self quarantine and it can make you focus in on what's important and Kenny real quickly up no balls two strikes on Logan Schnetzer Logan Schnetzer big hitter for Fort Dodge a lot of home runs in her Dodger career we'll play softball at Iowa Central Community College here in town leads the state in RBIs. But Molly, she bunted in a run in the fifth inning in the quarterfinals. She'll do whatever is necessary to win a softball game. Teammates call her Mama Low, one of two seniors on this squad. Yeah. Kenny with the off speed gets her to chase, gets her out on that front foot. They're blowing it by you. See Schnetzer. Out in front, just could not fight it off. Just gloved by Spore behind the plate. That brings up Martina Lowry. Her first career home run came yesterday in the state semifinals to help punch Fort Dodge's ticket into this title game. So she's that? hit a couple home runs here and there in club ball, but this yep. was the first one. Of the year at Fort Dodge. And it was just a line shot. It wasn't like this towering home run. It was just a frozen rope over the fence. She said shortstop Tori Bennett called her shot. She said right before my at bat, Tori told me, I know you can hit a home run. <laughs> and then she hits a home run. Looks at one outside. So drove in a run in the sixth inning, proved to be an insurance run for Fort Dodge. Has been swinging the bat well. Fouls that one off. While we're talking about the COVID-19 precautions, something different. If you haven't been able to make it to many softball games, is the umpires no longer handle the softballs. All the balls get thrown in from the defensive team's dugout as Kenny airmails that one over top of Spore. Hey, able to laugh it off though. Just loses the grip on that one. 
Head coach for Kennedy, Madison LeClaire, calls the pitches. Lowry able to fight that one off. Caitlin talked about the critical pitch coach, excuse me, kick pitcher catcher relationship between she and Spore and said she appreciates her catcher so much. She's honest with me. She doesn't tell me what I want to hear. She swung and hit her. a foul ball. She swung and then the ball hit her, so it's a dead ball. I thought it hit at the, cut, the catcher. Uh, no, I hit her. So that is strike three. We'll take another look here as a foul ball, or excuse me, the swing and it hit her. It hit her in the leg. And then the catcher. So that's a dead ball. No drop third strike rule if it hits the batter. So two away here, both strikeouts for Kaylin Kinney and Haley Wills, the third baseman, to the plate. Kinney looking to strike out the side here. Missing on the inside, now missing on the outside. Haley Wills went two for two in the quarterfinals for Fort Dodge. I think we'll see a lot of patience here. Called strike on that 3-0 pitch. And now strike two on Wills. And she missed again. Now we've got a full count here. Kenny, two strikeouts this inning already. And gets a third. All three Fort Dodge batters go down swinging as Kaylin Kinney now with four strikeouts. Oh, she gets behind in the count, 3-0, but does a good, really nice job putting those next two right down the hatch. So Fort Dodge getting set to Take the field for the top of the third as we get a look at Jalen Adams in super slow motion. Jalen, one of several sophomores on this Dodger team. We talked to her mom, head coach Andy, a little bit about what's it like to coach your daughter. She said it's hard. I am not easy on her whatsoever. I probably drive her crazy sometimes. She doesn't call me mom, she calls me coach. She told a funny story about uh, the first time that she coached this group of sophomores when they were maybe six or seven. I think she's, she said they got beat 22 to one. Now, I don't know if that's an exaggeration, <laughs> but she said, uh, we got it handed to us. And Jalen said, hey, something about pizza in the pool at the hotel. Yeah, she asked mom, did we win? <laughs> What do you mean, did we win? No, you got beat really, really bad. Said, uh, Coach remembered, uh, remembered the score here, 22 to one. It was to Waukee. Coach remembered. <laughs> Andy remembered. She's like, I can't believe this is my kid. But she said I didn't take it easy on him. We could have played at a lower level. Yep. Could have won a lot. We didn't, we got whooped and we learned really quickly that we had to get better. And she said because of that, the kids did get better. And because of that, they're in this situation to play for a state title. This one's fouled away. And now Adams way ahead in the count. No balls, two strikes. Lowry making that great play out at second base. Eddie Parker's first at bat. Chops another one, foul and out of play. Kennedy's put runners on in both the first and second innings. 
Adams and the Dodgers done a nice job of getting out of a couple jams. Patty Parker scored in the sixth inning yesterday on Kaylin Kinney's three run bomb. Trying to get a runner aboard here to start the third inning. Adams misses high and outside. There's a fly ball. Shallow left coming in. Cannot make the play. That's works. Attempting to scoop it, and Parker gets all the way to second base. Old Texas League blooper for Addie Parker. Well, that's a great out effort out in left field, trying to make that diving catch. And they're gonna trainers are gonna take a look at her here. Good try, baby. Good try. Just looking at her right hand would be her non-glove hand as we take another look. Watch her right. Hard to get a look at it there, but taking a look at her right hand. Maybe gonna tape it up here a little bit, see if she can keep playing. I don't think she has any intentions of leaving this game. I think it hurts, her fingers are shaking a little bit. A little Band-Aid on that index finger, and that's an important one for throwing that, throwing the ball. Huh? Hey, you gotta trust. It's what you gotta do. It's what we gotta do. What do we wanna do? We wanna win. We gotta keep fighting. We gotta keep doing what we're doing right now. All right, we're like this. Get on your toes, go attack. It's what you do, okay? Make every play. The wind's gonna take it. You gotta come in, okay? Hit your spots. We know where to pitch. We've watched this, okay? You do your job. Here we go. Hey, Out. One, two, three. Out. Here we go. Logan, be ready for the quick bunt down this line. You too. Okay. Fia. So Chloe Wirtz gonna make a couple of throws. Play catch with Tori Bennett. The shortstop makes sure she's ready to go. As that one gets away. Good opportunity there. here, Coach Andy Adams in that team huddle. Provided some good encouragement, some instruction. She was quite a player herself, all state player at Webster City, this neck of the woods, all American in the mid to late 90s for uh, BB in Storm Lake. She was an all American there. She's in the Hall of Fame at both her high school and her college. So she's a pretty credible source. Pretty credible resource for these young ladies to look up to. And this summer going into the Iowa Girls Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Intentional walk to Kinney brings up Maya Dodge. Fly ball left field. That goes foul and out of play. Dodge was intentionally walked in her first at bat. Facing Adams for the first time here in this top of the third inning. A big hitter, center fielder, recent transfer from Cedar Rapids Prairie. Ball. High and inside. Jalen Adams, the sophomore. With two runners aboard, nobody out here in the third inning. And she is facing the heart of the order. Dodge to the number three batter. Abby Spore on deck, the number four hitter. Dodgers have been able to lock things down first couple of innings after the Cougars got runners aboard. And a base on balls. Loads them up for Cedar Rapids Kennedy, and that brings Abby Spore to the plate. Spore hit it hard in the first inning. 
A line drive was caught by first baseman Logan Schnetzer, who stepped on first for the inning ending double play. Nobody out here in the third inning. Adams misses on her first pitch. Is four straight to Dodge to Walker. Got Parker at third, Kinney at second, Dodge at first. Adams evens the count at one and one. Abby Swar will play at Luther College this fall up in Decorah. She's interested in studying biology and genetics. Spore looks at strike two as Adams touches the corner on her last two. As one of the valedictorians at Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Here's a pitch fouled away by Spore. Here's the one, two. This is outside. Evens the count at two and two. These Kennedy batters all seem so disciplined at the plate, even with two strikes, Molly. Very disciplined. Adams has done a great job of getting on top, getting ahead in the count, tries to paint that outside corner, and they just do not chase. Line drive to our camera crew territory up above that third base dugout. Two My, balls, two strikes. Iowa PBS crew, exemplary work as usual. Get a, got a little wave up there from our camera crew, avoiding that ball. The 2-2 two -two to Spore flies it right field, tailing into foul territory and will fall foul. Malia Lowry, the sophomore, gave chase. And just enough of that breeze kind of from the left field pole towards the right field pole. It's kind of going straight across the diamond here. She makes that catch, though. She would have had to make a heck of a throw. I imagine. There's a grounder left side. Nice play by Bennett at short. Cannot get the out at second. And now off the base is Dodge. And Kinney's going to try and score. She sneaks in there safe. Two runs in for Cedar Rapids Kennedy. And what a slide by the pitcher, number 44, getting around that tag. She helps her teammate out. What a slide. Wow. Very athletic play. Rhonda Ravel at Nebraska getting a good one in the fall. Thank you, 24. Bails out Maya Dodge, who once she saw the ball was loose, left second base, went towards third. Well, Kinney wasn't quite ready to commit to home yet. But Abby Spore drives in two as we see our courtesy runner, Lexi Wheatley, the sophomore. Kinney does a great job giving her teammate a a chance to stay in that pickle, and she ends up benefiting from it, is able to scamper home. First and third situation, we'll see what Kennedy does here, see if they keep the pressure on this Fort Dodge defense. Mary Christofiak at the plate, delayed steal, and back to first goes Wheatley. the junior behind the plate. Here's a grounder. Third baseman Wills tries to catch. Tries to catch Dodge off balance with the fake throw to first. Dodge able to dive back safely. Good heads up play really by both of those players. I, I like the fake. They're trying to pick her off there at third base. Great heads up base running by Maya Dodge. Does not go for that fake. Keaton Gerber digs in, base is loaded. 
Nobody out for Cedar Rapids Kennedy and two runs in here in the third. Fisted towards the shortstop. The catch is made by Bennett. And there's one away. So is he right to the plate? Base is low to dodge at third. Wheatley running for Spores at second. And Kristofiak at first. Is he right? Infield single in her first at bat. Hard hit ground ball that Wills couldn't handle at third. This time Adams can't handle it in the circle. Lowry able to make the play and get the out at first, but a run scores as Dodge able to cross the plate safely. Adams tries to make a spectacular play. They get the out at one. But another run does scamper home. Kennedy putting together a big inning. One, four, three, if you're scoring at home. You're touched by Adams in the circle. And so Sam Sheck to the plate. Still two runners in scoring position here for Kennedy. Three runs in now in this third. And there's a line drive into left field, and it's down in front of Wirtz. Second runner trying to score. It's thrown out. Kristofiak tries to get an extra run. One run will count as Wheatley scores. And the RBI single by Sheck. A great throw and catch. Nice job of keeping focus, applying that tag. But the damage has been done. Amen. Hey, score. Here we go. Score. Let's go. And well, if you're Fort Dodge, you can't get discouraged. Fort Dodge home team in this situation. Plenty of time. Certainly very challenging to do it against the ace in the circle for the Cougars. Kalen Kenny. Who's been pretty untouchable so well. far. And she looks fairly fast in slow motion. She, she, she's, she's throwing some smoke out there, but she, uh, she's been pretty tough so far this entire season and here at the state tournament. She did give up her first runs of the season in the quarterfinals, but so far has been able to lock down her opponents and now has a four-run cushion, Molly and. Has to feel a lot more relaxed out there in the circle. By my count, she's four or five strikeouts already for four, I believe, yep. Kenny. So see if the Dodgers can adjust once they get to the second time through the lineup. 7-8-9 due up for Fort Dodge. They did have a base runner in the first inning when Bennett reached she was hit by a pitch, but then caught stealing a couple pitches later by Spore. And the first two to Malia Lowry miss low. Malia, the twin of Martina, second. Twins on both these squads, actually. That's right. The Sheck sisters, Kennedy, juniors. Here's a bunt. Oh, that's a great bunt. Lowry gets it down right in front of home plate. And just, just far enough away that Spore couldn't quite get to it quickly. Yep, and it just died. Not much spin on it at all, so it doesn't squirt foul. And maybe that's what Fort Dodge does. Maybe you go to some small ball, get this Kennedy defense thinking, keep them on their toes a little bit, try to apply some pressure. It's a called strike on the pitch from Kenny. Abby Spore yeah, behind yeah, the plate. Yeah, certainly showing that she is a, a tough catcher to run against.
Here's a bunt, and it's right through both Kinney and Gerber. And two infield singles here via the bunt for Fort Dodge. Really nice back control by both of these Fort Dodge players. Great placement. That pitch is a little high, but she does a great job getting on top of it. Perfect placement. Several green jerseys were moving. She catches them in a precarious situation with nobody to track down the ball, but then nobody to cover first. Time is called by Madison Relax. LeClaire. We just put four runs on the board. Relax. Pick the ball up, throw it to one, and get out. If it's hit to you hard, let's go here. Hit to you, let's get the lead runner, okay? They're probably gonna keep bunting. Stay in there. See the ball down, come get it. Let's go. Sometimes softball is really simple. Yep. You're up four runs, field the ball and throw it to first. And in this situation, I mean, you can try to get a, a lead runner. A lot of softball to be played, but get out. Avoid a big inning. First two runners aboard for Fort Dodge. Sophia Klinger, the number nine batter, to the plate. 20 plus hits on the season. And the top of the order in the on deck circle in Jalen Adams. And Kinney hitting Klinger. Klinger taking her base, and now our home plate umpire. Dirk Sorensen is calling for help. I don't think he saw contact with Klinger. I think he's not certain Klinger. if it hit her, but she took off. Okay, perfect, I just did that. Isaac, it did, you got it, perfect, absolutely. Awesome, awesome, yep, yep, there. Good. We'll take another look here. Good teamwork to confirm the call. Built it on the toe tops, perhaps. Give him something. <laughs> she sold it. So good for her. Ed Murphy out between first and second. He would have had to angle for that one. And he was the one that you heard say, I was certain there was contact. So now, Kinney in the circle trying to work out of a jam. And Jalen Adams, the leadoff for Ford Dodge at the plate. Slaps one foul. For Fort Dodge, you just have to keep making contact. This Kennedy team haven't seen a lot of base runners, haven't seen a lot of runs scored, not, not put in a pressure situation all that often, won by a bunch yesterday. So put the ball in play, make this Kennedy defense work. Another one fouled away by Adams. One ball, two strikes. Talking to Coach Adams says, we are fast. We'd want to put pressure on the defense. She's also got a couple of kids that can drive in some runs. There's a grounder left side. Fielded by Wills. The throw over to first is in time. A run scores as Lowry crosses home. That's a hard hit ball. Nice job by Adams. Getting behind in that count, hits it hard. Allows her teammate to hustle home. Six for 10. Good job, Chloe! Gonna have a pinch Six runner for here. For Chloe Wirtz, the left fielder. And coming in is Ava Allstock, the freshman. Great job by Chloe Words to get that butt down, to get on base, advance a runner after a bit of an injury out in the field. Good toughness. And we'll see if Wirtz's finger injury, if she returns out to left field or if Allstadt stays in the game. Or if she's in just to run here in this situation with one out, two runners aboard for Fort Dodge. Tori Bennett at the plate. Took one on the knee. In her first at bat. Here's the grounder, the plate, the plate. They need the tag, they got it. Gerber to score, and there's two away. Time. 
Great job. Definitely a situation. Base runner, you got to try to slide around that tag with no force. Nice job by the catcher. Apply that tag. That's a bang bang play. Nice focus there by 21, Abby. Abby Spore will play softball at Luther. Showing her defensive prowess here on that play. Two away now from Fort Dodge. Still two runners in scoring position as Klinger advanced to third and Bennett heads up base running. Made it to second base on that play at home. Big opportunity for Doster. Got to have a key hit. Kristen Doster, a two-run home run in the semifinals yesterday. Head in the count, two balls and a strike here. And it hit Doster in the batter's box. That is a foul ball. And the count goes 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes. gets a piece. Both teams scoring their first runs here in this third inning. Kennedy put all four on the board in the top of the third. Fort Dodge getting their first three batters on base. Nice glove by Deputy at third to end the threat and end the inning. One run. On two hits for Fort Dodge, it's 4-1. Kennedy leading the Dodgers. Here's our third inning recap. As Kennedy got things rolling, two runs scored on the Abby Spore hit. And then Fort Dodge would answer. Adams slaps it down the third base line to score Lowry, and then some nice defensive plays by Kennedy to keep it from being any worse than what that bottom of the third could have been for the Cougars. Four runs on six hits for Kennedy. Fort Dodge, one run on two hits. Both hits coming in the third. And that was out of the bottom of the order. Seven, eight, nine, got things rolling there in that third inning. Well, and Doster with a little bit of bad luck there. Hits a great shot over to third base. Very nice play by Regan Deputy. We'll play at Wartburg this fall. Here's a look at the crowd here at Harlan Rogers Park. Now Fort Dodge during the regular season, Molly had to limit their number of fans. Many schools across the state limited the number of fans. It was either a certain number of family members per player were allowed. There's a lot of pass lists for Fort Dodge. They handed out tickets. They had 200 tickets for each game. And Coach Andy Adams says, I had grandmas that were fighting for tickets. <laughs> I'm glad that we can get as many Fort Dodge softball fans into the park for our championship game and, and this entire state tournament. Yeah, I think her, her quote, I think it was in the Fort Dodge Messenger was something like, uh, Looking for a big crowd, of course, I understand COVID, but wear your face mask or wrap a towel around your head and let's go. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not here tonight, for Dodge, you're gonna hear from Coach Adams. And there is a good crowd on hand here and a called strike three as Jalen Adams, Coach Adams' daughter, to strike out. As Alyssa Martin goes down looking second strikeout for Adams. And gets ahead on the count as we're back to the top of the order. Abby Parker, leadoff double in the third, scored the first run of the game. Grounder right back to Adams. Easy throw over to Schnetzer, and there's two away. Up 
pitchers they can get they can get some nasty comebacks that one that one's a nice little Sunday hop right back to Adams well both of these pitchers very athletic can play other positions swing the bat well you saw that last inning Kenny who's up to bat here made that great slide at home just good athletes they continue they pitched to Kaylin Kinney here in the fourth. She doubled in her first at bat, was intentionally walked in her second at bat. Fouled that one back. She plays quite a bit of club softball as well. And misses up high. Kind of interesting too, played some club during the high school season this year on the request to try and get her some more at bats because she was getting walked so much. And goes down on strikes as Adams wins the battle. It's a one, two, three, top of the fourth. We'll take a break. We'll be right back to Fort Dodge with 5A championship softball. Hello, I'm Paul Yeager. This Friday, for one night only, Market to Market moves to Iowa PBS World so you can watch the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Championships on Iowa PBS. So if you just want to watch Market to Market, switch over to Iowa PBS World on our Dot 3 channel Friday at 8 p.m. Or catch us online anytime at iowapbs.org. Inside the defender was fantastic. With help, the challenge, lots of strength. Varian with a defender right on her and Brown. What a fatigue on the volley, left foot. Dipped it up as we have a look at this. What a brilliant delivery by Wee and Brown coming in. Friday evening at 9.30 on Iowa PBS. 4-1 is the third inning. Sparked the offenses for both top-seeded Fort Dodge and second-seeded Cedar Rapids Kennedy. We welcome you back to Fort Dodge. I'm Brad Wells. She's Molly Parrott. We've got our own cameras this year so we can maintain social distancing. Molly, that was a fun inning. We got the, the scoring roll in there as uh, both teams showing some fantastic defense and that offensive ability. We expected nothing but a great game. and. I would love to be sitting closer to you, but in the interest of being appropriately social distanced. Backhanded play by Kristofiak. The catch was completed by Gerber at first, and there's one away. Solid defensive play out there, makes the throw from her knees. Kristofiak will play at Wayne State this fall. It's Logan Schnetzer for the first out. Martina Lowry at the plate. Christofiak, <laughs> one of the many seniors on this Cedar Rapids Kennedy Cougars team. <laughs> and he fires the strike. Lowry struck out swinging. In her first at bat back in the second inning. Goes down swinging here in the fourth. And that is five strikeouts for Kaylin Kinney, the senior in the circle. to be a Nebraska Cornhusker next season. Now facing Haley Wills. Here's the Fort Dodge third baseman. Struck out in the second as well. Thought about showing bunt. One and one is the count. Will's very athletic, a patient batter we saw in her first at bat. Also the number two pitcher 
for Fort Dodge. In the last inning, she maybe thinks about showing Bunt there. Last inning, we saw the Dodgers really go to that small ball. That's how they were able to generate a little bit of offense against the Kenny, who really, for the most part, prior to that, it just mowed them down. Got the defense moving. Three balls, one strike. Will Stocchi saw ball four. Instead, Kenny gets the call, loads up the count. Three balls, two strikes. Coach Adams instructing her to move up in that batter's box. Grounder, left side, tough play for Martin. Just gets Wills at first. A one, two, three, bottom of the fourth inning. As you see the nice play by Alyssa Martin. The toss to Gerber. And that is four complete. And we let you know that you can stay tuned for a 12-minute documentary about the founder of the Special Olympics produced by Johnston High School students, Anjali Kumar and Ishan Chandani. One Woman's Vision, Eunice Kennedy's Shriver's Race for Equality, 2020 National History Day award-winning documentary about her fight for equality. Throughout July, Iowa PBS has been highlighting people with disabilities as part of its Move to Include initiative, funded by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which sets the stage for greater inclusion of people with disabilities in public media. Stay tuned after this game for that. 4-1 is our score here in Fort Dodge. The first of five championship games that you will see here on Iowa PBS. The 4A championship game comes up after this 5A game at 7.30 tonight, the scheduled first pitch. And then 3A, 2A, and 1A all comes your way tomorrow. Starting in the afternoon, Maya Dodge launches one deep. It's a one hopper to the fence. She's going up round second, headed for third. The throw is in time, but the tag did not get down. Safe at third is Maya Dodge. And that's a great throw on the relay, but she just gets underneath that tag. Love that aggressive base running. That was a bomb. Maya Dodge, the junior center fielder, is getting some Division I looks. You see, Wills thought she had the tag, but underneath it. Yeah, that throw just a, a tad high. So a leadoff triple for Maya Dodge. Or at the plate. Jalen Adams, just a sophomore in the circle for Fort Dodge, too. That's something that you realize she's facing a lot of seniors on this Cedar Rapids Kennedy team. Got two more years of Jalen Adams with this Fort Dodge softball yeah, this team. Fort Dodge team, just two seniors. And Schlerz over at first, the only one who starts, so. Caitlin Werning, also a senior on the softball team for Fort Dodge. You hear a lot about the Dodgers still the next few years, certainly. But you're right, I mean, just a sophomore and facing a, just a brutal lineup. Hard hit ball into left. The catch is made by Wirtz out and left, and the throw keeps Dodge at third. As that is Chloe Wirtz, the junior, back out in left field. So to the plate, Mary Christofiak. Reached on a 
fielder's choice back in the third inning. Swings through strike two. Adams just coming right at yeah, it seems like Cougar she, batters. Seems like she's gaining confidence as this game continues. Called strike three, Kristofiak down looking. Adams with her fourth strikeout. Right at the knees, outside corner, good frame by Doster. Two away. Keaton Gerber at the plate. Swings through strike one. Gerber, one of few youngsters in this lineup. As we've said, this Kennedy team, seven seniors. Six of those seniors, like we've said, will play in college next year. It's, it's hard to crack into this lineup. Gerber showing good patience as well. Three balls, one strike. Yeah, I mean, she really went after that first pitch with a big cut, and she's been really patient since. Grounder right side. It's stopped by Lowry, but nobody there to cover. And Maya Dodge will score as Kennedy adds a run here in the fifth inning. An RBI infield single for Keaton Gerber. Lowry does a really nice job, shows her range. Just kind of tough luck there. Nobody there to cover the bag. So Izzy Wright, designated player, is up. The senior. Throws it straight back. Izzy Wright to play at central. One for two. Single in the second. Ground out in the third. We mentioned earlier a lot of American Rivers Conference's connections. Madison Clare, head coach for Kennedy, played at Coe. Fly ball into right field. Malia Lowry underneath it makes the catch. But an insurance run pushed across for Cedar Rapids Kennedy. And we'll step away for just a moment. We'll be back with more state championship softball right here on Iowa PBS. AARP Iowa and Iowa PBS invite you to tune in to celebrate the fair. Hey, guess what? I've got the key to the Iowa PBS archives room, and I'm going to bust it wide open and show you almost 50 years of Iowa State Fair highlights. So plan to tune in August 10th through the 14th and relive the memories and the feel of that special State Fair excitement. Hi, I'm Charity Nevy. Are you ready for some state fair fun at home? Record the kids telling a joke or sketch some art with sidewalk chalk. Try your hand at butter sculpting, decorating an ugly cake, or crafting a decorative face mask. You can even show us your pet's greatest tricks or write a state fair poem. Try one or try them all. Visit iowapbs.org slash fair for details. One Cedar Rapids Kennedy getting that Cougar crowd fired up. Now back to a four-run lead. I would say Kennedy definitely outnumbered when it comes from a, a fan numbers perspective, but they are loud and proud. Kaylin Kinney in the circle. Just continuing to work. She's got five strikeouts so far as we begin the bottom of the fifth inning. A one, two, three inning in both the second, excuse me, both the first, second, and the fourth inning. 
Seven, eight, nine due up though for Ford Dodge. This is the order that started the bases loaded with nobody out inning back in the third. And they did it with small ball. Yep. Couple of bunts early. Grounder right side, Lowry digging. But the easy flip from Christofiak to Gerber, and there's one away. Makes contact, just a pretty easy play for Kostroviak over at second. Chloe Wirtz fouls that one back. There's a single for her back in the third as well. He was thrown out at home on the nice play by Gerber, the first baseman. We're just trying to get it started here in the fifth. A couple of balls get away from Kinney here. It's interesting talking to Kaylin and her catcher, Abby Sporv, and pitcher-catcher battery since eighth grade. Went to different schools growing up, but met. They've been pretty inseparable as a battery since then. It's the swing and the miss. Strikeout number six. And Abby, the catcher, really doesn't go out and talk to Kaylin all that much. She said, really, do we just make eye contact? And we know that we're good. We know that we're on the same page. And you see Spore, the senior, and Coach Madison LeClaire. And there's Kinney pumping more strikes into the zone. Sophia Klinger at the plate. Junior center fielder. Trying to find a way on here with two outs in the fifth. Bunts it. Right back to Kinney to throw to first. Right on the money. Three up, three down once again for Kinney and the Kennedy Cougars. They take a 5-1 lead into the sixth inning. And how did we get here? In case you're just tuning in, here is a look at our highlights. Kennedy got it going in the top of the third inning. Abby Spohr, two runs in as Kaylin Kinney helping out Maya Dodge with some base running there. Dodge would later score on that hit. Another RBI by Keaton Gerber. And then a nice defensive play made for out number three for Dodge. Gets on the board. Jalen Adams drives in Malia Lowry. And Cedar Rapids Kennedy does get a run in the fifth inning as well as Keaton Gerber drives in Maya Dodge. A leadoff triple to start the fifth. 8 9 1 due up for Cedar Rapids Kennedy here in the sixth. Sam Sheck and Alyssa Martin be the first two up and Jalen Adams we've been noticing Molly the last two innings three up excuse me she's had she's been looking stronger lately here even with that leadoff triple last inning she settled in and got two quick outs well for Dodge you know, looking at that line score and looking at those highlights did a great job of answering in that third inning scratching one uh, run across but then Kennedy with the insurance running with the with the pitch of the caliber of Kaylin Kinney. 
to go down four runs. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's a, it's a big task. Fort Dodge will, will need to have some things fall their way. Check fouls that away. No balls, two strikes. Check with a strikeout and an RBI single. That came in the third, and there's the ground out to Schnetzer. Caught it right above the base. And there's one away. Schnetzer would be put out on first round number one. That'll bring up shortstop Alyssa Martin. So now Alyssa Martin to the plate, a ground out and a strikeout, and her two at bats. Schnetzer, the only senior on defense here for Fort Dodge. Martin swings through strike one. No yeah. plans to play softball next year. Alyssa Martin, likely her last softball game. Wants to go out in style. One swan down, nice play by Adams to get the out at first, two away to retire Martin. Top of the order now comes to the plate for Kennedy. Addie Parker comes up. She's one for three today. A double scored a run in the third inning. Led off that third inning that plated four for Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Coach Adams for Fort Dodge talked a lot about her team being fighters, being scrappy. They take a lot of pride in that. Grounder to Wills, the throw across the diamond. A one, two, three, sixth inning for Adams and the Dodgers defensively. And we'll listen in here to the Dodgers. You got to hit her. That's what you got to do. Sometimes there's just not too much to it, Molly. Well, Coach Adams, uh, you could hear her say, you guys say something, you gotta hit her. And uh, probably easier said than done. This, uh, Caitlin's had a really nice game in the circle, but as I was saying previously toward the end of that inning, Coach Adams and this Dodgers squad, they talk about being a family. They've played together for a long time. They're scrappy, even when I would say when, when Kennedy really got things going in that big third inning, Fort Dodge didn't look rattled. Kennedy just, just came up with the hits that they needed, made, made the plays. We'll see if Fort Dodge can make it interesting here these last couple innings. Well, and it is the top of the order here for Fort Dodge in this sixth inning. So if there is a time to have it, you want to do it with your top of the order to get it started. Jalen Adams did drive in a run in the third with her ground out. Jalen getting a little pep talk from center fielder Sophia Klinger. The top two teams in the state, Fort Dodge, ranked number one, 28 and three on the season. Cedar Rapids Kennedy, ranked number two, 25 and one on the year. Their only loss. 12 to 1 defeat to the hands of Iowa City High. <laughs> Kenny in the circle, though, unbeaten this year. 11 and 0. Has only allowed four runs all season. Three in the quarterfinals and one here in the championship game. Here is the one two. Adams trying to get it started for Fort Dodge. Stays alive. Kalen Kinney, six strikeouts on the day. 
Good discipline by Adams to hold. Kaylin Kenny does a continues to do a good job working at her own pace. We mentioned in the pregame sometimes she gets going a little too fast, according to her head coach. But she and she keeps the tempo the way she wants it to roll. She's pretty unstoppable, definitely in control out there. Strikeout number seven, and this one jammed up Adams. Right at the knees and just couldn't decide quick enough. Tori Bennett due up. Reached in the first inning, hit by pitch. Reached in the third on a fielder's choice. Talk about the duo of Kinney in the circle and Abby Spore behind the plate for Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Well, Abby Spore's mom, Julie, won a state softball title for Webster City back in the late 80s. Beat Charles City. That was back when there was just one state champ named each year. 1994, Iowa Girls Athletic Union went to three classes in 2004. They moved to four classes in 2012, moved to five classes. Can't say enough about the great work by Jean Berger and the Iowa Girls Union team doing a fantastic job of this, hosting this tournament despite a lot of challenges stacked against them due to the pandemic. So kudos to Jean and, and team. Such a great experience for these student athletes. There we see good Jean Berger. At, good look at Jean wearing that bright pink mask. You can always count on Jean sporting a lot of pink. I love it. Such a long standing tradition for girls' athletics in the state of Iowa, and Jean has really upped that in her tenure. When you think about the fantastic athletes that have come out of the state of Iowa in multiple sports, not just softball, you see Kenny here who's going into Nebraska, but you've got softball players already in the Big Ten. You've got basketball players in some of the major conferences. And a lot of depth as well. I mean, filling up Division II, Division Three rosters. Well, and so many talk about the experience of, of playing in a state tournament or a state track meet and just the pomp and circumstance involved. It's not like this in every state, that's for sure. Able to celebrate the achievements of these young ladies. And it's been fun to hear, and we heard it from many teams, but the amount of work that these kids put in during the month of April and May, Molly, when everybody was on lockdown, they had to find a way to do workouts, either on their own or some would get together with, with one or two other teammates to do a small group workout. Just the dedication and, and work ethic that they learned from that. And that's something they can carry with them for the rest of their life. Just so, a time of so much uncertainty. I think softball has been a nice escape from reality to some extent. And Tristan Doster trying to get things going for her Fort Dodge squad here. Try to get something going. Doster, one of the players for Fort Dodge, has said we got some extra workouts going. Did a lot of work individually. Doster, we talked to her yesterday after the semifinal, and she said, I never doubted we were going to have a season. She was keeping the faith, keeping a positive mind, and she's got a runner aboard for Fort Dodge. A nice disciplined at bat here with two outs in the sixth inning. And Logan Schnetzer to the plate. Logan Schnetzer, if there's anybody that you want in the plate in this situation to drive, try to drive in a couple of runs, she might be the one. Big home run hitter throughout her career. Hasn't had a lot of luck so far today against Kinney, but it only takes one pitch. Set the school record of home runs in a season last year as a junior with 14. She's also the career home run record holder, has 35 in her career. 
at nine coming into the state tournament. Trying to put a good swing into this one. Seeing her Dodgers trailing by four. Here's the one, two. Good discipline to lay off that. You know she wants a piece of this. Coach Adams said, you know, I think Logan's been putting a little pressure on herself. Has high expectations. She's kind of like the mama bear of this team. Dropped by Gerber, able to pick it up and step on first. So 5-1 is our score. And let's take a look at the good crowd that's on hand here in Fort Dodge for this 5A championship game. Some Dodgers fans. Even out in the outfield, all the stands filled. You got everybody's gotten used to bringing folding chairs to high school softball games this year, and that continues here at the state tournament. A chance to social distance and do do what you can as best you can. There's we a lot of people distanced. in here today. We are. <laughs> We've got some marked off areas for us. Everybody else doing what they can to try and get a view of this championship game. History about to be made as Fort Dodge and Cedar Rapids Kennedy. See, we've got six six feet between us. But both these teams, Molly, working for their first championship game. Now we're on camera here. We've got uh, both teams looking for their first state title, and that's just a special thing to try and bring to your school to get to this championship game, first of all, is special enough. As you think of Fort Dodge, down four runs, such a young team. Kennedy, many seniors on this squad, trying to close out the careers of all eight seniors with a title. And, and both have left it out on the field here today. A lot of talent on these teams. Two great coaches who are terrific role models for the young ladies on, on their respective teams. Both played college softball at a high level. Both teach at their respective high schools. So great relationships between these uh, student athletes and coaches LeClaire and Adams. Kaylin Kinney is senior at the plate. A double, a walk, and a strikeout in her three appearances. We'll see if Adams tries to challenge her here in this at bat in the top of the seventh inning. You can tell Kaylin's played a lot of softball at a high level. Doesn't play other sports, just plays a lot of club ball in the spring and in the fall. Even doing some club ball this summer. And she's not just a pitcher, she can play in the infield a little bit. We saw her do a really nice job on the base pass, that excellent slide at home. She has a bright future ahead down in Lincoln. This season, she would normally pitch the opener, and then Jamie Sheck, the junior pitcher, would pitch the second game of the doubleheader, and she'll get a courtesy runner here. And in the run is Addie Albert. Addie Elber wearing, got a left wrist taped up pretty well, had an injury during the season. So only able to pinch run at this point. It was right at the end of the regular season, right before regionals started. As she was a kid that played right field as the backup catcher, she was hitting 500, starting in right field, broke her thumb in practice right before the postseason. You can see that cast is pretty well taped up, but it's nice that she can still see a little bit of action here in the state tournament. It'd be hard to use a glove with that on your Ugh. 
on your left hand. Just Kennedy Green, a freshman. That, that cast. Maya Dodge, a nice battle. Two walks and a triple today for her. Maya Dodge, you mentioned it earlier, but just joined the team this spring. The family moved into the school district and she got transferred in before the end of the year. Has played club ball with the Sheck sisters. Goes down on strikes. Strikeout number five for sophomore pitcher Jalen Adams. And there's one away. Jalen Adams continues to bring it. Can't lay off that high heat. Abby Spore gets around on that one. Fouls it pretty much straight over the dugout towards the parking lot. I know that's media parking out there, Molly. Not sure if he was aiming for one of our vehicles, but it had the distance. Spore driving in two runs in the third inning. Takes one on the arm. And there's two aboard. And the right arm. That backside, those can sting a little bit. Courtesy runner Lexi Wheatley back out to run for Spore. She also ran in the third inning. So Mary Christofiak to the plate. We saw Kennedy out on a couple insurance runs yesterday in semifinal action. Christofiak set to play college ball at Wayne State College. It's 0 for 3 here this evening. Reached base safely in the third on a fielder's choice. Ahead head in the count now, two and one. Adams paints that inside corner. Swings through, strike three. Down on strikes for the second time today. That's number six for pitcher Jalen Adams. Two out, two aboard for Keaton Gerber. And Gerber having a good day at the plate. She's two for three. The single in the second, an RBI single in the fifth. Coach LeClaire wouldn't mind an insurance run or two with another base hit from Gerber for Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Well, Kennedy, they do such a great job of giving themselves a chance to score every inning. Gerber, strong cut. Following that one straight back. There's just no weak spots in this Cougars order. Straight back into the mask of Dirk Sorensen. And Tristan Doster right away. Make sure home plate ump was all right. Thank you. She needs one more strike call. No <laughs> <laughs> one misses upstairs.
Grounder left side. Bennett, the flip to second, not in time. Coming around third to score. And Doster tags out Alber. And out at home. There's the flip, not in time. Heads up play by Lowry to fire at home. Let's listen into the Fort Dodge huddle here. As much as you can, bug the ball, get on, do what you can right now. They got you right here. What do you got? What do you got? I want to see what you got. Let's go. So bottom of the seventh, Cedar Rapids, Kennedy, three outs away from a state title. Fort Dodge needs four to keep playing. Five runs this inning would earn them the school's first ever softball championship. Dodger head coach Andy Adams hoping maybe that little bit of momentum. Nice play defensively can Add a little momentum for them on the offensive side. She challenges her team, says, show me what you got. You got a chance here. Scrappy team. She talks about how these, of course, she has a, a daughter of her own on the team, but the rest of these teams are like her daughters and doesn't take it easy, though. She says, show me what you can do. Bunt, hit. Let's make something happen. She likes to talk about the toughness of her Ford Dodge team and Molly, I think it's pretty safe to say that they get a lot of that toughness from working with Coach Andy Adams. <laughs> Martina Lowry, two strikeouts on the day, trying to bunt her way on here in the seventh. Fort Dodge needs a big inning as they face Kaylin Kinney. Pops that up and over the Kennedy dugout. Facing a tough pitcher. Kenny's allowed just four runs all season, including this one in this championship game that came back in the third inning. She's headed in Nebraska to play college softball after this season. Head coach Madison LeClaire trying to help bring the title back to Kennedy in her fourth season. She's been with this program since 2011 when she was a student athlete at Co. She was helping out in the summers as an assistant coach. And was able to take over eventually. Done a really nice job developing this group of seniors for the Cougars. 2017, they finished third at state. First year for Coach LeClaire. Last year, they lost both their games here in 2019. Remember, they did have that Injury that shuffled their lineup around a little bit, lost to Iowa City High, and they lost to Fort Dodge 8-0 to zero here at the state tournament. Trying to come all the way back for a championship, making their first appearance in the title game. Just missing low on the off-speed pitch. Martina Lowry had a similar at bat where she was just tough, relentless, forced a lot of different pitches. Overall for Fort Dodge, their 15th trip to the state tournament. Lowry continues to battle. Cedar Rapids Kennedy, just their fifth state tournament appearance in school history and trying to become the first Cedar Rapids area school of Cedar Rapids to win it since 1998 when Cedar Rapids Jefferson won a title. Kenny with the off speed. Lowry, great job just getting a little off balance. Gets enough. Love it to foul it back. Kaylin Kinney, too. We haven't even mentioned it in the circle here. The 2-2. Two -two. 
continues to battle. But Molly, she's a type one diabetic. And she's had times where she's gone low at times. But something that she's learned to manage, she's got a monitor on the back of her left arm. Every few innings, checks with the assistant coaches. Has been dealing with type one diabetes since she was 10 years old. And there's a called strike three. Strike out. Great at bat by Number Lowry. Nine. Nice job by the catcher sport to bring that one up a little bit. Nine strikeouts now for Kinney. Haley Wills at the plate for Fort Dodge. You mentioned those, uh, the health challenges that Kaylin has with diabetes. She said, I'm a little stubborn about it sometimes, but I've learned how to manage. She said it's made her a stronger person yep. and really helped her mature. She said, even when I was younger, just having to take it seriously really helped me mature as a person. Facing a little bit of adversity through that. Would love to win a state title. Here's the 0-2 upstairs on Wills. Wills a strikeout and a ground out today. Fort Dodge gonna battle here in the seventh. Couple of good at-bats. The one, two. Wills continues to fight. Haley Wills, very athletic, fantastic defender at third. Follows that one straight back. Give these Fort Dodge batters some credit. They have made Kinney earn every out in this game. And even when she's, she, she has a bunch of strikeouts, but it's, they've made her work. Fighting off pitches. Wills, the sophomore, continues to battle at the plate. And Coach Madison LeClaire in the fourth season. 132 wins, That's 19 losses. Say she did not go. Will stays alive. Coach Adams at third asking Wills to win it. Here's the 3 2. Strikeout number 10. Good battles in this seventh inning. Both result in Kinney strikeouts. Come on, baby. Come. Okay. 
Thank you. So See a little lineup change here. Two away. And Number 36, Olivia Herring into right field. A senior utility player entering this state championship softball game here in the seventh inning. Nice for the senior to get in the game. Malia Lowry at the plate. A single in the third, ground out in the fifth. Trying to get it started in the seventh. And Cedar Rapids Kennedy, one out away from winning this 5A title game. Well, if Fort Dodge is unable to make a really impressive comeback here, fully expect them to be right back in uh, in this position a year from now. Drive into left field, out of the reach of Parker. And Malia Lowry, a two-out single, out to left center. Love the fight out of Lowry. Make something happen here with two outs. Not going to go down. Not going to quit. So Chloe Wirtz to the plate. Swings through strike one. The throw back to first. Not in time. Lowry gets back safely. Heavy score behind the plate. She thought she had her. Gerber was ready for her, too. Fouled back, and Kinney ahead in the count. No balls, two strikes. Kinney will keep this out of the zone here, way up in the count. Down to their last out for the Dodgers. The 0-2. There's the throw down to first, and Lowry able to take second base. Got that extra lead and was waiting for the throw from Spore. That time, advanced. A little bit of a delayed steal there. Lowry with that big jump, taking a risk. If you're Kennedy in this situation, the runner on second doesn't matter. The batter, in fact, doesn't matter. Wherever you can get an out, get an out. Up four runs. One out remaining. Kinney in the circle works at the plate. The one, two, down in the dirt. The throw down to third. Out at third is Lowry and Cedar Rapids. Kennedy wins the 2020 state championship. Well, the seven seniors for Cedar Rapids Kennedy finish their careers on top of the 5A field. And they take down the top seeded and home team, Fort Dodge, 5-1 in a fantastic softball game. Well, we knew we had a good game ahead of us when the evening started. Number one versus number two, couldn't ask for more. Pretty good steal there, or excuse me, a slide there by Lowry, but a great throw by Spohr. Great application of the tag. Kind of a strange way to end a championship game, but.
from Fort Dodge, Haley Wills. From Cedar Rapids, Kennedy, Sam Sheck. From Fort Dodge, Martina Lowry. From West Des Moines Valley, Alex Hunold. From Ankeny Centennial, Taylor Runchy. From Ankeny Centennial, Ella Schultz. And our next awardee is not president, Olivia Harmon from Muscatine. Nice round of applause for her. From Cedar Rapids Kennedy, Maya Dodge. From Fort Dodge, Jalen Adams. And your Class 5A All-Tournament Team Captain from Cedar Rapids Kennedy, Kaylin Kinney. Ten strikeouts in the championship game certainly earns Kinney the captain. There is a look at your All-Tournament Team. Dodge, Spore, and Sheck from Kennedy and Adams. Martina Lowry and Wills or Fort Dodge and all those ladies playing so well down here this week, both at the plate and in the field. Not a surprise to see Kaylin Kinney with the all tournament captain honors. Just in addition played a great to week of softball. Medallions. Every participating player will receive a commemorative softball provided by Iowa Farm Bureau, title sponsor of the Girls Athletic Union. Presenting awards are members of the IGH SAU Board of Directors. Deanne Kramer, Jim Beamer, Travis Fleschner, Greg Ebling, and Roger Francis. Congratulations to the runners up in class 5A head coach Andy Adams, and the Fort Dodge Dodgers. Congratulations on an outstanding 2020 softball season. And your 2020 Class 5A state softball champions, head coach Madison LeClair, and the Cougars from Cedar Rapids Kennedy. The first softball championship for Cedar Rapids Kennedy and Molly Kinney, fantastic in the circle. And then the bats just came through throughout the day. Well, we expected both of those things. Kinney, great pitcher and very potent offense for the Cougars. We fully expect the Dodgers to be back. Coach Adams, great job on a, congrats on a great season. That's a young squad for Ford Dodge. A lot of bright days ahead. Allowed just one run on three hits. Struck out 10, walked just one. Cedar Rapids, Kennedy, and Kaylin Kinney, your 5A state champions. We've got the 4A state title game coming up. Don't go anywhere. Keep it all right here to Iowa PBS Sports. Kennedy wins the 5A crown. More to come here from Fort Dodge. Funding provided by Fairway Meat and Grocery is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Girls State Softball Championships. Fairway believes in supporting the places Iowans learn, work, live, and play. 
congratulations to all the schools and student athletes in this year's games. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. <laughs>